The three elements that comprise social presence are affective uh, expression, um, interaction and open communication, and group cohesion. So those are sort of the three indicators, the three areas under which there are indicators for each of those um, sort of areas. And, um, you know, we've done tons of research. We've asked faculty and students lots and lots of questions about each of those areas to try and understand what exactly uh, is going on in the classroom and um, in the online classroom and how people are interpreting different things that either are present or not present in those areas. So um, for uh, in the area of affective um, expression, w one of the things is get, building a sense of class community and getting, uh, one of the ways that you can do that is to help people to get to know each other, get to know their uh, their classmates. And so you want to promote um, a sense of belonging. You want to establish trust and, um, and really have people know and understand that the instructor is there and is a live person and is a real person, multidimensional, not just an online computer screen or a robot or something, but to really begin to build um, trust both with the instructor and, and with the others in the class, um, establish a sense of class community, as I said, that people are actually real. Um, and, and some of the ways that this can be done is by um, by instructors and students, by giving students permission and by giving um, faculty uh, an awareness that um, helps them to develop their online digital persona, their voice, their personality, so that they come off as a as a real person. And it can, it doesn't mean that they have to be chummy or that they have to be different than how they are, because everybody's different. But it does mean that they have to put some energy into understanding that there is a barrier or a wall between them and their students that they have to make some effort um, in order to reach through. So that computer screen is, you know, this wall and there are there's an instructor on one side and the students on the other and they're not there at the same time and so there has to be energy um, in terms of the design of the course and how the course is facilitated in order to um, um, to bridge that gap essentially. And so you can do that with humor, you can do that with self-disclosure and you can do that um, by by expressing emotion in, in some ways. Um, I can tell you sort of examples of how I do it in my own class and, and how I would recommend that faculty do it in their classes. A course should have some sort of an icebreaking activity. Before they you get into your teacher speak or assignments or whatever, there needs to be some way to break the ice with the students. And that begins to establish some trust establish people as real people, establish um, a sense of community when you get to know each other. What I do is uh, I have an, a voice thread that I use, and VoiceThread is just a tool. There's lots of different ways to do this. It doesn't have to be that way. It could also be with a plain discussion. But what I like about VoiceThread is that it'll, it gives you a little icon picture so you can immediately see a person, and it gives you the option of um, giving your own introduction and conducting your own conversation, either in text, audio, or video. So you have multiple ways of expressing yourself, and it gives the students choice. Um, and also the multimedia aspect of it is more engaging. Um, and you can set up um, sort of slides or pictures or videos or whatever as the centerpiece around which this icebreaking conversation happens. And so it really seems like more of a conversation than static text being passed back and forth, which can also be made engaging, but um, it's, just a, it's just a tool that, that I think is quite effective. What I do is I actually interview my daughter, who I think was seven at the time, um, I asked her questions about me. So, you know, like, what's my favorite color? What do I like to do? What do I do for my job? Those, a bunch of questions. I had written them out beforehand. And I asked her those questions. And so I interviewed her about me. 
And then I posted that as my introductory video in my uh, voice thread. And this is accessible. I, I can give you the link if you want to see it. Um, it's public, so anyone can see it. Um, and I find that it's extremely effective at communicating that I'm a multidimensional person. I'm not just you know, what I do. I'm also a mom and I also like chocolate and, um, you know, I have, uh, you know, a, a, it shows a little bit of the relationship that I have with my daughter. It's in my living room. So it shows my house and my dog and my husband walks by in his slippers, you know what I mean? And so, um, it, it's a, it's a very cool informal way to, um, give the sense of who I am through my daughter's eyes have the students create profiles and most um, course management systems or you know social networks give you the ability to create a profile and that's another way you can establish you know um, individuality personality a attach a, a face to a name like I said use discussions for a, a plain a vanilla type of, um, of introduction and what I would recommend in an introduction I actually do a combination like I do a discussion introduction and I do the voice thread um, I ask students to um, you know tell me a little bit about what they're expecting in the course a little bit about themselves um, a little bit about what they're expecting a little bit what they already know because some of them have been online students before some of them may have taught before um, or had other online experiences and what they learned from those experiences and then what they're expecting in the class and so we get a little bit of the social stuff and then we get a little preliminary stuff um, about uh, expectations for the course. You have to um, facilitate a way for people to form distinct impressions of um, each other and of the instructor and so you can do that um, in terms of the voice that you use when you communicate with your students and so if you speak in kind of scholar ease using third person you're distancing yourself from the student in in addition to there already being a physical distance and that that fourth wall with the computer screen distance um, so if if you say, if you address an individual student, it's, it is, um, um, you know, a, an easier way to um, demonstrate connection than if you talk to the entire class. Because really, on the other side of the screen, at any one point, is an individual, not an entire class of people. So instead of saying, you, you students should do X, Y, and Z, it should be to you, the student, you know, um, and, you know, using individual names would be good, too. The other is, is like your voice and your tone. And I try, I'm very informal, and I try to be conversational, and I don't sweat um, in discussion things like grammar or, you know, punctuation or whatever. And I model that for my students. So when um, we're having the informal discussions, um, it's totally okay with me to, um, you know, be very informal in terms of tone. And so I'm modeling that and so that shows the students that they can be that way too. That also helps to build connection and, and have this sense that you're having a conversation as opposed to performing for the instructor. The other thing that I would recommend in terms of affective instruction is having a place in the course that allows the students to um, informally talk about stuff that's not related to the course. So having some kind of a, of a dedicated bulletin board space, so you can call it whatever you want, coffee shop or um, coffee break or whatever, but just a space where it's clear to the students that they can go there to socially interact with their class means just like they would before a face-to-face -face class or in the halls or you know in the you know cafeteria or whatever they should have a space where they could go and ask um, you know kind of interact socially with their classmates